is. This is the biggest project this channel has ever seen. Today we're going to be building this massive trebuchet. Now most people call these a catapult. The difference is catapults are operated off of twisted rope while trebuchets run off of a counterweight. Now we are not building your traditional style trebuchet. We're building what they call a whipper. It's a little bit of a newer design that can throw further for the size of the machine. Now we actually have experience in building old siege machinery. I know it's a really weird thing to have experience in, but we have it. My brother especially loved the old siege machinery growing up. He built multiple machines and built a lot of models like this to scale the ballista. And yes, before you even ask, it does work. Now back in the day, we even competed in what they call the hedge ball chunking contest to see how far we could throw a hedge ball. Now my brother built one of these whipping trebuchets before. It was made out of wood bridge planks and it did not hold up to the weight and the stress as you can see here. Now even though that was a spectacular fail, if the machine was going to fail, that was the best way it could have done it. Just completely destroy itself. However though, we do want to see how this machine will throw. So after the machine collapsed, someone else at the competition gave us his old spring powered trebuchet. I don't know. He was going to build a new one. He no longer wanted his old frame, which is made of heavy I-beam. Is a perfect base to start building on for all new drum shape design. Sadly enough though, the competition never happened again and we never got a chance to build it and never got a chance to test out the design. And now we're back here. 12 years later we got way more experience. We have machinery to help us lift things into place so we can build something that's bigger and better. As you can see, a lot of the machine is already done. However, I want to uh, probably do a little bit of bracing up on it and I'm going to put these axles under it so it has wheels. Now, any trebuchet or catapult that has wheels is way better off because it takes out so much of the stress if the machine can move when it fires. When you do not have wheels under them, the machines will tip up forward and backward. As you can see here on the machine that collapsed and how it's completely tipped up forward. And even at this one point right here, the machine is completely off the ground. So the wheels really do help take away all that movement and hopefully it won't collapse. So enough talking, I'm going to go ahead and start building while you subscribe to the channel. When there's nothing you can say, allow the time to slip away. If the wheels are going to happen or not, but it sure makes it way easier to move around. So now that we have the axles and wheels mounted onto a trebuchet frame, now it's time to start on the counterweights. I'm using these old LP per paint tags off some old tractors. They're about the exact same size and they're going to work really good because I can put water in them and control on how much weight I want to have. The mounts for the propane tanks are going to have to be a L shape, which coincidentally had the perfect shape right here. I got two corners, they're both identical, and they even have the gusseting here, so hopefully it will hold up to the weight. All I need to do now is do some cutting, some welding, and we should be good to go.
metal weights. Finish step here. And here's the pin I'm using. It's actually a shaft I cut off of an old junk hydraulic cylinder. Now, both of these tanks are the same size. The uh, brackets are both the same height. The tank on the right is sitting in a little bit of a hole because the ground's uneven. But they should be just about identical. And I think they're going to work out really well. Now, I hold these in the town and ran them across the scale. And I have 480 pounds of weight right here in these two tanks without any water. So with water, I'm going to be able to get about 1,200 pounds of counterweight on this trebuchet. So now the counterweights are done, it's time to move on and work on the mount that the counterweights are going to go on to. Now this axle that you're seeing right here, this is going to go up here on top of the machine. Luckily enough, like I said, being this machine was already built when it was given to me, this axle and everything was already done, so I didn't have to build any of it. However, though, with that being said, I am a little bit concerned of this not being heavy enough. Because these hubs here that it swivels on is just a four bolt uh, small trailer hub. And I am a little bit concerned on holding up to the weight. Because yes, these hubs can hold more than the 1,200 pounds of weight I'm going to have. However, that 1,200 pounds is just going to hit all at once. And I really stand a chance of breaking the spindles on these hubs. So if that happens, I'm going to have to uh, go with something bigger. Now, this end here is going to be the end the counterweights go on. And this end up here, this is what the arm is going to be mounted to. Now, the counterweights are not just going to mount straight to this. Being this is a whipping design trebuchet, this uh, piece of I-beam that's right here, now this end of it, on this L, now that end sticking up is going to be pinned onto this end right here. And now when that is attached, then the counterweight is going to be hinged onto this end right here. So the whipping design trebuchet has a lot more hinging points than your traditional trebuchet. I have a bunch of cutting and welding ahead of me. I'll get that finished and I'll get this axle mounted up the top of the trebuchet. Just finish up the arm, get ready to get it mounted on top of the machine. When you realize these guide wires that we put on it, which look really nice by the way, really makes the whole thing look nice and complete, they're going to be in the way. And our counterweights mount up right here, and what's in the cock position, it's going to be just sitting just about like this. And our counterweights are going to be hanging straight down right where these guide wires are. So we're going to have to take all those back off. I'm going to take off my mounts that I welded on here for the guide wires because there's no point to have them on there anymore. And I guess we're going to hope for the best that the arm's not going to just fold over when it shoots. We can leave this guide wire onto the front of it. It should be okay. 
but the rest of them, they all gotta go. And we also got the Selene completely finished, and it's looking really good. I got a steel ravine that slips over the hook here, so hopefully it slides off nice and smooth with no problems at all. The Selene itself was made by my brother, and he hand stitched all this. It's just a heavy uh, strapping that he wove together, and uh, hopefully this holds up. It took him two days to hand sew all this because it's so thick and so hard to get the needle through it. His uh, machines couldn't do it, so he ended up hand stitching it. So this should work out really well. We've never had to sling this nice on any machine we've ever built. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all these guide wires, and then we are finally ready to put this arm up on top of the trebuchet frame. shot ever. We got the arm mounted up, got the counterweights on. Uh, we set this uh, four inch steel pipe underneath the wheels so hopefully it's going to give it something to roll on so those rims don't cut down into the ground. Man I think we're ready. We'll see on how all this works. We got our trigger set up and you see that pin sticks out. We got it hooked up onto this linkage. And uh, from the ground, you're able to uh, slide it into place without having to climb up top of the machine to latch it. And then when you're ready to fire, you pull on that rope. We should be good to go. All right, we're going to go get the backhoe. We're going to use it to cock it. That's why it has that uh, steel loop. There it hangs between the two counterweights. We're going to hook onto that with the gym pole on the backhoe. Get it picked up and see how it works. Uh, we're a little bit worried. We have a little bit of side movement right here. And it will hit the supports, but we're hoping it's going to uh, fall pretty straight and it's not going to want to hit. If it does, I'm not sure what all we're going to tear up, so let's hope it doesn't happen. At most, I can see when the machine's bucking after it shoots. It could bounce across them, but uh, hopefully we're good to go. Okay, we got it cocked and it is ready to go. I guess moment of truth. Well, 
it is now the next day. It got too dark last night to continue filming. And it's safe to say that that could have gone a lot better. It also could have gone a lot worse. Uh, what happened was it fell the wrong direction. It was supposed to fall this way, but our counterweights was not hanging over the axle quite far enough, so it fell back this direction, which was not the right way to go. Uh, it actually did throw the hedge ball. I'm not sure where it landed. You can kind of see it in the footage, but it landed somewhere out in the grass. It probably went at least 100 or so feet, which is kind of surprising, being it fell backward. As you can see, the arm is already bent. So our prediction is the first real shot we do with it is it's going to fold the arm over. And we're going to have to go with something heavier. And also we bent the lower linkage here. We bent that I-beam. But we think it's going to be okay. We're going to just leave it the way it is. And hopefully it holds up. And so far, I think that's about the extent of the damage that happened to the machine. Uh, what we need to do is we have our uh, trigger latch, that piece of metal sticking down right there. And we need to change the angle of it. So when you cock the machine, it's going to make it so the counterweights hang the right direction over the axle so it falls right way so not a huge deal just some minor adjustments and we should be back out here trying it again so i was really wanting to get a good shot off with this machine but it's not going to happen this video it's going to take too long to get it fixed up and i'm out of time so this is probably going to be it for right now now we're going to go ahead and get this fixed up and get it shined up so it looks even nicer and i'm going to be posting a video here in two weeks so stay tuned for that be sure to subscribe so you do not miss it. If you have any questions at all, uh, leave them in the comments here down below and I'll answer them in here in the next video. And hopefully we get this machine working really nice. Now I really think it has a lot of potential. We're going to see how far we can throw a hedge ball and see what else we can throw with it. So be sure you subscribe, like, comment down below, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.